Welcome back to Anderson Acres. We're in the baby barn again this week and what we're doing today is we're going to talk a little bit about temperature when you're incubating your chicken eggs. Temperature is so vitally important and I've got two incubators that here that have two different methods of reading temperature just so that I can talk about the differences because temperature is the single most important part of incubation. Okay, there is nothing more important in incubation than a good, consistent, correct temperature. If your temperature is wrong, your hatch will fail. Okay, in order to verify your temperature, you're going to need an independent thermometer. So this has a digital thermometer. This one actually has a mercury thermometer. And then in each of them, when I'm hatching, I have a separate, a separate little um, calibrated thermometer. Okay, the reason I have an independent thermometer is because even though these are high quality incubators and I've never had one be wrong, you could, they could be, okay? The thermometer in your incubator can be wrong. Cheaper incubators sometimes don't even have a thermometer, so get a thermometer you can trust. I purchased calibrated digital thermometers, that's what this is. It's got dust on it, sorry. But this is a calibrated digital thermometer that it has a built-in hygrometer and I get them from a, lab a laboratory supply store, so a laboratory supply store. You may have a, lab you might have a laboratory supply store in your area. So if you have a lab supply store, check your local universities. Often they actually sell pre-calibrated, well-calibrated thermometers, both digital and traditional. Glass thermometers work pretty well too. Um, just make sure it's reading accurately. And thermometers, if you're lucky, like this one can switch between Celsius and Fahrenheit. That's, have, that's handy to have, simply because you might be more comfortable in one scale than the other. Okay, I am more comfortable in Celsius. It's a little bit more accurate. Um, I was raised with Fahrenheit, but Celsius is a little bit more accurate, a little bit easier to adjust uh, without going wonky. So... I use Celsius, but if you're more comfortable in Fahrenheit, you should definitely use Fahrenheit. A thermometer that switches back and forth between them is really handy, regardless of which scale you're more comfortable in, just so you can double check yourself. So the independent thermometer should be placed wherever the eggs go. So in the case of this particular incubator, I would place it directly in the egg tray. And I would move it around during incubation. So every time I check on the eggs, I might move it to a different tray in a different slot. So right now it's down here in this bottom corner, but I might move it to the second tray halfway down. I might move it to the back tray in the other corner. I like to move it around to make sure the temperature in my incubator is pretty standard. Okay. Now, what temperature should it be? Temperature inside your incubator should sit right at 99.5 Fahrenheit or 37.5 Celsius. Half a degree on either side of that sweet spot is okay, but don't let it drift too much. Okay? Too high and you won't get any chicks at all. Um, too low and the development could be retarded to the point where you'll get chicks that have issues, like they'll have hatching issues, they... Their legs might not develop correctly. You might have one that doesn't get eyes. Low temperature, even if your chicks continue to develop, could lead to really bad problems that mean you have to call the chick later. So try to keep your temperature consistent. Okay, you might have to fill it a little bit, especially with cheaper incubators. So you might have to go up and down. So on this one, I literally have the panel here to go up and down. Okay, um, on this one here, you actually take this piece off in the back you take this piece off and adjust the temperature just by using a little screwdriver back and forth because this is not a digital this is more manual this is the uh, Brinsea Maxi 2 Eco I like this one as a hatcher that's actually what I use this one for I don't use this one to incubate I use it to hatch this I use for incubation so if your incubator is using a light bulb instead of a heat coil um, try to change the wattage if your incubator is too high or too low. Now, both of these use heat coils, and I recommend that you use heat coils in your machine. So try to find incubators that don't use light bulbs. You want them to use heat coils if you can. Okay, that's what mine use. Try for that. 
Check your temperature at least twice a day, maybe more if you can, and adjust accordingly. If you go lower than 36 Celsius or 97 Fahrenheit or higher than about 103 Fahrenheit or 39.5 Celsius for too long, you're going to lose your chicks. Okay, so if you hit those temperatures and it's more than a little, more than 15 minutes or so, you're going to start to lose chicks. Okay, if you're at the lower end of that range for too long, but you don't go below it, your chicks might still hatch, but they might just be delayed by a day or two. So instead of hatching on day 21, they might hatch on, let's say, day 23 because they got cold. So their um, development was held back a little bit by that low temperature. So if you're close to 103 for a while, but you don't go over 103 Fahrenheit, your chicks might hatch a day early, okay? So keep careful track of your temperatures if you want your chicks to hatch on time and healthy. Um, power outages. This is actually a big, big problem for some people. Some people have frequent power outages. We don't. I have think I've only had one power outage that was a concern, and I just used the dog to keep my eggs warm. Don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> Just because whiskey is weird doesn't mean all dogs are that weird. So what do you do if you have a power outage? If you suddenly lose power while your eggs are in the incubator, first don't do anything. A lot of power outages are only going to last about 15 minutes. So 15 minutes is no big deal. Okay. If the power is restored by in within 15 minutes, incubation will resume. You're fine. Temperature in the eggs did not drop far enough for anything to happen. So if it's a short-term power outage, let it go. Just move on. If it lasts more than 15 minutes, it's time to start watching your temp. Okay? So right now, this incubator is not plugged in. So I'm at about 22 degrees Celsius, and I'm at about 60% humidity. Okay? Keep an eye on your temp. Don't worry about the humidity. In the case of a power outage, you're not worried about the humidity. You're worried about that temp. So ignore the humidity while you have a power outage. Temp is more important. Okay? If that temperature in the incubator starts to drop by a few degrees, it's time to get a warm blanket. If it's even one degree drop. So typically at the 15 minute mark, I will grab a nice warm blanket and I'll wrap it around the incubator. Okay? To keep the heat in. So I'd wrap it around both. Don't cover your vents. So in this model incubator, this is my vent here. Okay? You can close the vent or you can open the vent. Don't cover that vent. You must keep the ventilation open. We'll talk about ventilation in a different video, but in the event of a power outage, keep that vent open. Okay, open your vents all the way to get lots of air circulation. Wrap a blanket around the incubator. Leave only your vent areas free. Now, depending on your model of incubator, you will not necessarily have this kind of vent. Okay, these are the kind of vents I have on all of mine, like this one here in the front has that same kind of vent. But different incubators, different vents. So... Do not worry about it too much when it comes to the humidity and just make sure you have ventilation. Make sure your temp is as warm as you can get it because you just wrap blankets around it. Keep that free. Okay, don't block the vents. You still want air to circulate. If you have a warmer spot in your home, move the incubator. Okay, now is also a good time if you're in the middle of a power outage to consider a sunny spot. I know I said previously we don't put incubators in the sun. Right, but if we've got a power outage and the temperature is not being maintained by the incubator, you might want a sunny spot. May, watch that temperature because you may have to pull it back out of the sun because it gets too warm, but use the sunlight to your advantage if you can, okay? Move the incubator to a warmer spot in your house if you can. If you have a generator or other power supply, you could just plug in your incubator without any problems. Okay, I have a solar panel, a small solar panel charging unit to plug these guys into if I lose power now. Because the one time that it happened that I was concerned, I was using the dog. I literally was making him lie down and shoving eggs all around him so that the eggs would stay warm. It worked, but, you know, I don't recommend it. So now I have a small solar kit that I can just run over and plug these guys into if I have to. Um, if you don't have that, use the blanket and make an effort to find how long it will be until the power is going to be restored. If you can, see if you can take your incubators to someone else's house if it's going to be long term. So if your power company tells you, well, we're probably not restoring it for two or three days, okay, it is definitely, definitely time to consider getting the incubators to someone else's house. 
Okay, I did that. Um, my best friend had no power. Her incubator lived in my house for three days. No big deal. Do whatever you can to hold in the heat. If the heat keeps dropping, and it will, don't panic. It takes a long time for cold injury to, to occur. When the power does come back on, resume incubation. Your hatch might be a delayed uh, by a day or two, but they might still hatch. Life finds a way, so don't give up on your eggs just because you lost power for a few hours, okay? Trust that maybe you'll still get a few chicks and continue with incubation. Candle in four or five days, see if anyone is still alive, okay? We've talked about candling, or we will talk about candling. But candle your eggs, and then you will be able to see if anyone is still alive, or if you might have to ditch the whole batch and start over. Unfortunately, that occasionally happens. It's a shame, but it does. So remember, temperature, 90, 97.5 or, sorry, 99.5. 99.5 Fahrenheit or 37.5 Celsius. Try to stay as close to that as possible throughout the entirety of incubation. Do not alter your temperature. Temperature is the single most important factor in a successful hatch. That's about it for us today here at Anderson Acres. We'll see you tomorrow.